This video will familiarize you with the Grad Images data entry software and process. Additional training, tools, and resources can be found on the Data Entry Typers website. This has already replaced the old blog and contains links and downloads, payroll information, upcoming work availability, and anything important we need to let you know about off-site data entry. The new website is gradimagesde.webs.com. At the graduation, students fill out address cards. The student's email is the most important piece of information. We take pride in getting the graduates their proofs within 24 hours of their graduation, and this would be impossible to do without an email address. Be thorough, use all information on the card, as well as any information from a previous source pulled up by the data entry software. Type information into GTS as quickly but accurately as possible. Unfortunately, there's not a set schedule for DE. A season calendar with approximate times work is available will be posted on the blog as well as emailed to each off-site associate. Evenings and weekends are typically the busiest. Before you can get started working, you are going to need to install the GTS data entry program. Unfortunately, at this time, it is Windows compatible only and will not run on a Mac. Before installing GTS data entry, you will need to install Microsoft Net Framework version 3.5. Upon completion of the Net Framework update, you should be ready to install GTS data entry. Please note that the links to the update as well as GTS data entry download are both available under tools and training on gradimagesde.webs.com. After installation, GTS data entry should appear under the start menu in a folder titled GTO tools. The program can be a little bit quirky and sometimes people get an error when the software first starts. This is not unusual and can be caused by anything from the internet security settings on your computer to an unusual number of people in the system working. Generally, if you just close the error, it will pull up the login screen. However, sometimes you may find it necessary to reopen the software. This is the GTS data entry program. This console will provide you with the cards to type and important information. I'm going to go over its operation in a moment, but first let's take a look at a sample card. Cards come in a variety of types, but generally tend to have the same standard information. We want to make sure that we get all of the data off of the card. If we miss information, this graduate may never receive their photos, which is unacceptable because they miss out on capturing such a big moment in their life, and we miss out on the possibility of making a sale. You will note that many cards have an additional email address. Remember, email is the most important thing to us because it allows the graduate to receive their photos within 24 hours of their ceremony. Notice the 62 in the upper left corner of the card. Sometimes a card will have additional information that is not part of the graduate's address. It may be a frame number or seat number. This information is very important when matching up the correct graduate with the correct photo. When there is additional information on the cards that we need, the data entry program will include an additional text box for the information. These can be individual numbers, a series of numbers, or even a letter and number combination. Also, these numbers can show up anywhere on the card and sometimes can even be found on the back of the card. If you are having difficulty reading the card, the card can be manipulated with a list of keyboard commands to make things easier. Cards can be rotated if they are upside down or on their sides, flipped if there is information on both sides of the card, and there is even a zoom feature for cards that are too small. Now that we've gone over the basics, let's cover operating the data entry program. The data entry program is split into three sections, which are numbered. Begin with section one, the salutation and first and last name. The card should appear on the top and any comments will appear in the pink box to the right. It is very important you check this pink box as it will give you any special instructions about the card you are working on. Notice in section 1 the frame number text box. This is not standard and should only appear when cards from a particular event may have additional data like I talked about when we looked at the card. As you type the name, the system will search our database to see if we have the graduate's address and information already on file from another source. Generally, we get a list of graduates from the school in advance. When you are done typing the name, if there are any matching names in the system from that event, they will appear in Section 2, and their addresses should auto-populate in the text boxes in Section 3. It is very important that you finish typing the graduate's complete name, even though the boxes in Sections 2 and 3 will auto-populate before you are done. It is important that the address on file and the address on the card are compared for accuracy. If you have an address on the card that is not already in the system, accurately type it into the next available line in Section 3. The system is made so that if you start on the salutation and hit tab after finishing each field, it will move you along. Many times, we do not receive an address for every student before the ceremony. When this happens, nothing will pull up in Sections 2 or 3. Type the student's address, and even more importantly, their email address, into the text boxes in Section 3. 
To save time, you can skip the city and state boxes. They should auto-populate when you enter a zip code. Accuracy is very important to us. Errors in address entry can result in grads not receiving their photos and on us wasting money on postage. Upon completion of the card, the final step is address validation. Click the validate button next to each address. If the address is recognized by the system as a valid address, it should turn green and the button will say valid. If it does not, then you may need to double check the card. You may have mistyped something or something may be missing from the zip code. If you still can't find a problem, you should try looking the address up on USPS.com to verify that it is formatted correctly. There is a page dedicated to links and tools for correcting invalid addresses on the Data Entry Typers website. Sometimes a card will come up that is not filled out or a card will come up with no graduate information on it. It could be a program or other information from the photographer. When this happens, treat the card as if it belonged to a graduate named blank card. Type blank into the first name box and card into the last name box and move on to the next card. The program will prompt you that there is no address and then again it will prompt you that there is no email. Just say yes both times and it will move you to the next available card. It is very important when you get a blank card that you check the back. Sometimes you may find a name, email address, or even a complete address on the back of the card. Occasionally, we get cards that only have names and no address information. These cards were used at the ceremony by the name reader and are important when we match the graduates' names with their photos. Typically, the students will already be in the system. These cards are great because all you have to do is type the student's complete name and they should pull up in the matching customer box in section 2. This is generally very straightforward, however sometimes students' names do not exactly match up. The student may go by a nickname that has found its way into the system, or sometimes a student may have a hyphenated last name. These are generally pretty easy to spot if you are paying attention. For example, this student's full name is Matthew Scott Anderson, however they are in our system as Matt Anderson. If you type Matthew, the source will not find the graduate. If you type Matt, however, the student should come up as an existing customer. The system has some quirks, so I'm going to show you a couple of the common ones real quick. If you click Save and Next and do not receive a new card immediately, give it at least 10 seconds before trying again. If you keep clicking, it will submit a blank card and that grad might be missed. Sometimes during validation, the system will change the zip code of an address so that it is not formatted correctly, normally by adding a letter for longitudinal zip codes in the Pacific Northwest. If you try to change the zip code, the system will say it's not formatted correctly. If this happens, instant message someone in the office and let them know the event name and card number in the upper right corner. Once you have informed someone in the office, delete the entire address line and move on to the next card. To delete the entire address line, click on the box to the left of the address, then press the delete key. If you find that you need the keyboard commands while typing, just press the F1 key and a help box will come up. Just know that you must close this help box before you can continue typing. Now let's just review the basic guidelines. Type in all caps. Everything you type should be in caps. Start by entering the salutation and then typing the student's first and last name. Tab between fields and don't use punctuation. For example, if you're typing 171st Street, it becomes 171 Street. Be sure to close the GTS data entry software when you take breaks so you don't hang on to a card and hold up an entire event. Be fast but be accurate. We do check performance and accuracy is very important to us. Be sure to check the website for software updates, tips, news, scheduling, and links to all the training materials and software. gradimagesde.webs.com Finally, and most importantly, when in doubt, ask. If the website doesn't answer a question you have or you run into trouble, contact Teresa or Brett in the Tallahassee office.